Hey folks, let's talk some more about reaction equilibrium thermodynamics. So you recall uh, last time we set up the equilibrium constant and the equilibrium constraint. And uh, we talked about how uh, delta G was a thing that we could solve for and we could therefore find uh, Ka and that Ka would then also be related uh, to activities or fugacities uh, in some way. And that's all lovely. And uh, we even worked out a value for Ka for our model reaction. But what you might be asking yourself now is, you promised us that we were going to be able to figure out what the composition of our reactor was at equilibrium, and we can't do that yet. Wonder no more. Let's do that today. So uh, Ka, as you recall, is equal to e to the negative delta G over RT, where delta G is for the reaction adjusted to the temperature. And that is also equal to the uh, multiplication over all values of i of activity raised to the new i power, or equivalently, the ratio of the fugacities raised to the new i power. This side of the reaction, this side of the equation, I mean, where the a or the fugacities are, is how we're going to get our concentrations. It's how we're going to figure out what the equilibrium composition of the reactor is. And we're going to do this by turning to something we already know. Those activities, or fugacities, are things that we learned ways to compute when we were looking at modeling the behavior of fluids in mixtures and uh, for phase change. So guess what? All those assumptions still available, still on the table. So we can assume ideal gas, we can assume ideal solution, we can assume real solution. And we're going to use the exact same uh, set of calculations that we used before. Um, in general, uh, as you know, ideal gas can only apply to a vapor system. Ideal solution can apply to a vapor uh, or a liquid. Um, it tends to show up uh, for liquid systems more often, uh, sometimes for vapor systems. And again, real solution can be vapor, liquid, or uh, what you've got to use if you have more complex phases, like things with solids involved or liquid-liquid uh, systems involved. And uh, also, most of the assumptions uh, we've done all the way through are for low pressure, so around atmospheric systems. If you've got a supercritical system or very high pressure system, there's a correct in, uh, correction term that you uh, really need to be uh, bringing in. Uh, check your textbook for that term and how that works. So here we go. Uh, if you've got a vapor phase system and a reasonable pressure, you're probably fine assuming ideal gas, which means the fugacity with a hat turns into yi times p, and the standard state fugacity just becomes one bar. It's just like a pressure. And so that one bar kind of sits there and goes pop and disappears. The units cancel out with the pressure that's above it. So uh, yeah, so partial pressures. When we're talking about an ideal solution, we use the same ideal solution assumption uh, from before when we were working with mixtures, and that is that the fugacity in the mixture is equal to Xi times Pi sat, or the activity, not fugacity, activity in the mixture, Xi times Pi sat. So we know how to do that too, right? Maybe uh, we use Antoine for P sat, and X is just X. When we are working with a real solution, uh, and this can happen with the gases. It o almost always happens with the liquids. We're in the situation where activity is equal to Xi times gamma I times Pi sat. So we have to bring in an activity model. And uh, this happens quite frequently with a liquid phase reaction. It's, uh, it's something you're looking at. If um, you're doing real solution and working with fugacities, uh, I just want to note that... Um, for a gas, you can bring in an equation of state to tell you the fugacity of uh, your vapor components. Um, you could also use an activity model, but people will often use an equation of state. So here is our complete menu. This is everything we need to know to be able to solve here. Because you can see, if we assume, for example, ideal gas, that we will be able to plug in that yi times p up where uh, the capital pi ratio of fugacities is, and that is how we're going to be able to solve for 
composition based on knowing capital K. So now we're ready to set up and solve our problem of the day. We're going to stick with our model uh, reaction system. So it's still steam reformation of methane in order to generate syngas. So uh, just Get this equation in your head. You're going to be using it over and over and over uh, because it is, as I said before, a nice model for us to work with being a equilibrium limited reaction. So it's methane plus water, which is steam. Remember it's steam, uh, is in equilibrium with carbon monoxide and three hydrogen. And I need to give you what we're filling our reactor with. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, in order for us to be able to solve this. So our initial number of moles, so this has units, number of moles, is uh, we're gonna start with two moles of methane, four moles of steam, and one mole each of carbon monoxide and hydrogen. Um, and if you think to yourself, gee, this sounds like a situation where I'm gonna have to use C, you are correct, bingo, well done. So we're bringing back C. Please go back and review that video if you need to, because we're using it again now. Um, so item one, write the mole fractions for each of these components in terms of C. And I'll give you a little reminder of what that looks like. N, so the number of moles uh, of any given component is the initial number of moles plus nu I, and remember that's negative for reactants, positive for uh, products, times C. Okay, and then you are also going to have an uh, N total. And you'll take a ratio of those two, and that'll give you your y's. So yeah, each expression for y is going to be a bit of a handful. It's going to have um, xi on the top and on the bottom, probably. Okay, and then item two, take all of that together and write your expression for ka, and if you can, solve it. So you're going to go back and get uh, your delta g from uh, last time. You're going to put that together and have that uh, equilibrium constant, and you're going to set that equilibrium constant equal to this expression that you've developed that has C, etc. in it. And then after you've written that out, we're going to spend some time reflecting on what you learned from that, what that tells you, uh, where that's going. Um, it's going to be a pretty complicated thing to solve. It's all algebra. You know, this is not differential equations here. It's going to be an algebraic relation, but we'll have C in ratios on the top and on the bottom. Um, and so much of the time, it won't be a straightforward thing where you can write C equals whatever. It'll be a multi-root equation. But that even being the case, usually only one of those roots is going to be something physically realistic. So let's give this a shot.